Good morning, Flow Ladies. Coach Angela here. We're going to get started in seated, doing some breath work. So I know it's not always the easiest thing to do breath work when you're not super familiar with it. Um, so you can go to Ujjayi breathing. You can do a deep hum if you're not comfortable with ohms. But it's fun to introduce something new to your girls and ask them to get out of their comfort zone a little bit and see for us as coaches. So you would take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, you're going to start the ohm at the back of the throat. Oh. And allow the lips to close with the natural exhale of the breath and then continue that hum, that mm, until you release all of the air. And you'll do that three times. Then we're gonna come into down dog. So all together, we'll transition into tabletop and then push back into down dog. And I'm gonna back away from the camera just a little bit. I'm always too close. And you're gonna do three lion's breath. So lion's breath is inhale through the nose and open mouth exhale, sticking the tongue out. So you'll do three of those. And then we're gonna do a sun A, so soft knees. Step all the way through. Inhale up, exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, half and lift. Plant the hands, step back to plank, shot, or sorry, cobra all the way down. Inhale up. I prefer to do three just to really warm up the back line of the body on that inhale and exhale before we push back into plank and back to down dog. And you would do that one more time through with breath. Then we're going to meet in chair pose, big toes to touch, holding that chair, asking them to tuck the pelvis, shoulders relaxed, gaze up forward fold plant hands and then we're going to step left leg back into warrior one so we're at that 45 degree diagonal with the back foot inhale up five breaths working on squaring the hips then exhale plant the hands walk to the center of the mat wide-legged straddle forward fold walk back to the top of the mat come down into runner's lunge and then our lizard pose heel toe that foot to the outer edge Drop one of those forearms if you're able to, and hold for about five to 10 breaths so they can really release the outer hip. Then we're going to inhale up into warrior two. So we're going to drop the back foot, inhale up, reverse, and then cartwheel hands down, down dog. So we would step back, this is when we would add that chaturanga, up dog, down dog. We'd switch sides, so we do our sun A, Jumping in this time, warrior one, straddle, runners, lizard, warrior two, reverse. And then we're gonna meet at the top. We're gonna to inhale into our chair pose, then airplane those arms, come up into half chair, lifting that left leg, and then kick it back into airplane pose. So we're flexing that back foot, square the hip, palm down to the ground. Our release is going to be crescent, so super slow. They drop that back foot and inhale up, from there, we're going to lower hands down, lower the back knee, uh, inhale arms up, and then exhale, come into half split. So half split, you're gonna ask them to move that foot forward slightly, square the hips, so this is not half split. We're gonna be up, sitting, having that hip stacked on top of the knee, flex the front foot, inhale up, exhale fold, three times on the breath, before we plant, lunge forward, and then Step back and sit down. Okay, repeat that side. Uh, repeat on that second side. Soft knee, look up, jump or step. Meeting at the top of our mat. Cactus, forward fold, up we lift. We're going to jump back to down dog. Then we're gonna inhale right leg lift. Step it through, warrior one, airplane, chair. And then we're going to add a twist. So we're going to bring palms to touch. We're going to hinge out looking over the cliff and pull that left elbow across. So you have the option to stay here in uh, that twisting chair, option to fly the arms, or we're going to work side crow. So we're actually going to plant the hands on the mat to our side. 
and ask them to work on getting up on that tricep of the back arm. So we want to imagine that that back arm is a shelf that we're going to sit on. So they really have to practice. This is where that bird perch under the feet really helps because it helps them lift their hips and get it up on that shelf. So that's really the struggle for most women is when they're trying their side crow, they're not able to get their back hip on that back tricep, which is kind of, um, important if they've never held a side crow before. Eventually we get to the point where we're not resting on that tricep on the back shelf and we're able to hold that side crow here. But eventually starting out, we really need to pop the hips up and then keep the gaze looking out in front. If they hit their head, that's fine. They come back up and practice digging into those fingertips. So side crow, give them about a minute. Rushing too much through um, these challenging poses doesn't really set your girls up for success. Give them time to practice. They go in, they come out, they go in, they come out, that's fine. Just give them about a minute, encourage them to break out of that comfort zone and just practice putting the weight on their shelf and digging into their fingertips, looking out in front of them just like crow. We'll switch sides. We're all gonna meet in down dog. We're gonna come up to standing mountain. Um, and then three times, forceful exhale, bringing hands to hips, three times. Then we're gonna go into tree pose and then into dancers. So we're gonna do tree, I would probably do tree on both sides. I know it says then switch sides, but just uh, so the legs don't burn out from the standing pose. So our tree have a couple of options. So open the hips up, ask them to lift up and out of that right hip so they're not sinking down and the left hip pops out. Open that knee up and then palms come to heart, overhead to grow our branches, or they can come back behind and do a chest opener. So they would hold tree both sides, asking, giving them ample time, about 45 seconds maybe, to really practice balancing. So if you go into tree and you hold it for 20 seconds, that's not super challenging um, for people who do have good stability. And it also for those that are unstable, they fall out and come back and fall out and come back, and then they feel like they never got to hold the pose. So give them an ample amount of time when you're doing a balancing exercise. And then for our dancers, if we're looking on our right side, we hold our palm out to get some money. We're gonna grab on the inside of that foot, left arm lifts. We're going to start to lean forward first before we even begin to kick. So lean forward because the lower body is always heavier than the upper, lean forward. And then after they break that parallel plane, they're gonna to start to kick, 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 and eventually give them about a five second warning so they can get into that full expression. So if we're holding for 40 seconds, 45 seconds, they're about here, they probably get here around 30 or so, give them time and then say, and last five breaths, full expression, reach, 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 and give them that uh, window because they're not gonna be able to hold that full expression for the whole 45 seconds. Then you'll switch sides. Um, then we're gonna do pull throughs, which are my favorite. So if you had blocks or handbags, of which I forgot to grab, um, you're gonna have them resting up on those handbags. Their feet are gonna be flexed. They're gonna start out here and then they're going to pull through. So they're actually going to walk the feet out and pull through. So that elevation is what allows the hips to come through. They're gonna do that five breaths. Then they're gonna release, extend the right leg and bend the left. And we're working into a bit of a full or half bind. So from here, the left arm may wrap around and then the right arm will lift. Potential for that half bind here. That's why we have straps um, or just the half bind. So then you would repeat that again, pull throughs five times, and then we'll release again, second side, half bind or full. Uh, exhale, we're gonna come into crow pose. So we already practiced our side. So we're gonna look out and up, come into that crow, and then exhale, plank, hold for one minute. Uh, child's pose to release, side plank, 30 seconds each side, down dog into forearm plank, and then we work on our dolphin. And we've worked on our dolphin a lot um, recently, so just making sure shoulders are stacked over elbows. No one's hair is in a bun, because I did this the other day and tried to roll out, and my bun prevented me from tucking my chin and rolling, and I really strained my neck. So make sure that if they've got a bun, you warn them about that. So from forearm, tippy toe of the feet in, you can practice lifting one leg and then the other, and then suggest kickups for those that are trying to practice getting all the way up in their dolphin. After that, you'll lower into the belly, come into Sphinx Pose here. We'll cross arms underneath after our Sphinx Pose, and we're going to practice straightening those arms out. So you'll do one minute, um, about 30 seconds in, you'll switch so they can rest on their uh, ear, but making sure that the arms are fully underneath the body. So we're really 
pushing the elbows down and asking the arm to fully straighten. Uh, then we'll roll to the side to T and stretch out our shoulders. Child's pose, down dog to tabletop. Extend right leg back, cross it, and then sit back in that shoelace pose here. And you'll rest for one minute, then we'll switch sides. Then we're gonna take legs wide, legged seated straddle, one minute. Lower onto our back for supported bridge for two minutes. Then we're going to release in our reclining butterfly here. And we're gonna go into our twist. And then we have Savasana.